Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here on this wonderful Thursday, November 16th, 2023. It's about 12 18 p.m. here, California time. And uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe looks like a 1.3 into the area of Southern California. Uh, latest information here on the Iceland earthquake activity got a hundred and it uh, looks like about 126 earthquakes here in the last six hours, mainly confined to the area of the magma intrusion here outside of the Grindavik, Iceland area. Still showing uh, what looks like maybe potentially a little bit further northward movement here on the map. Now that is still around that uh, magma intrusion area that the uh, Icelandic folks there in the uh, Met office uh, showed here on this line basically it's a magma intrusion dike here around this area of, of the Grindavik region of Iceland and uh, it could very well be possibly starting to maybe uh, swell a little bit further over here towards the east as far as inflation goes uh, right now the latest information statement uh, from the uh, folks there at the Iceland Met office uh, well, it doesn't look like they've shown any type of update yet as far as today's um, update goes. This is still from yesterday. Um, I'm guessing, along with the uh, the amount of earthquake activity, haven't really seen any heightened movement, that uh, there really hasn't been much change here. Again, this was from yesterday, and they just talk about how uh, there's still GPS uh, displacements going on down there with the uh, magma moving around inflation and deflation going on periodically across this area of iceland uh, with that vertical displacement map here kind of get a good idea where some of the magma may be brewing up or uh, maybe traveling to uh, this area around the grindavik iceland region showed a little bit of deflation following a large inflation event here um, prior to this time period so we got magma definitely moving around there uh, I still think the uh, possibility of an eruption is quite high. These guys do as well. Um, so we'll just continue to watch that and report back on anything that uh, they may update. But I even checked out their Twitter uh, account out here. And um, really nothing being posted here since about the 14th, just a couple days ago. Uh, there's a couple of the um, GPS, or uh, these are SO2 emission monitoring systems there and uh, those actually come in handy right when it comes to volcanic activity there's the uh, magma uh, dike area magma intrusion region where they believe the eruption is going to take place so just kind of watching this seeing how it plays out um, looks like we did see a 2.6 over here a little bit off of that line that uh, magma intrusion line a little bit further to the east um, earlier uh, today it uh, looks like that may be one of the largest ones in this cluster of earthquake activity that continues to this date. So no major changes, but definitely still stuff uh, rolling around underneath that area of Iceland as far as magma goes. Uh, we did see a little earthquake activity way up here uh, near the Jan Mayen area, well north of Iceland, but along the plate boundary here, 4.9 early this morning. So we'll continue to watch that. I think we'll see a major increase uh, in earthquake activity when this thing gets uh, ready to ramp back up. The current Iceland uh, seismograph station right there where the hand is still shows what looks like a little choppy activity on the seismograph itself. Those could be very small earthquakes occurring uh, and not quite you know, flatlining these uh, uh, seismograph uh, readings that you know sometimes these larger earthquakes would do. All right. Go ahead and move on here see what we got anything major brewing up overnight uh, largest magnitude looks like a 5.7 from yesterday uh today well looks like a uh that 4.9 up there in the uh northern areas here of uh, north of iceland around the greenland sea goodness but that's about it as far as the largest magnitude so far today uh, looking at clustering going on once again here across the Indonesia Islands area. A uh, lot of this from yesterday. Uh, we did see quite a bit of deeper movement back here across the Tonga Trench yesterday. 
We're starting to see some effects of that today along the plate boundary with some shallower earthquake activity. Uh, we did see a 4.6 here off the coast of uh, the Sumatra region, right around the Java Trench. Still think we need to watch this area for some potential larger scale movement. We've seen a lot of clustering going on here across this area eastward with very minimal progression of momentum uh, in terms of earthquake activity across that trench. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, down in the New Zealand area, nothing showing up here on the USGS map. Uh, the Earthquake 3D globe there looks like they had a, well, a little bit of activity off the North Island shore. So let's double check that and see what's going on. Whenever we see something away from the plate boundary, kind of want to know what's going on. Well, let's see. Let's go back here to the all magnitudes. Of course, this is going to show all of the smaller microquake activity. It looks like some of this movement it may be on shore right there with that 2.4. Um, but overall, it doesn't look like anything major is stirred up overnight here across the GeoNet um, earthquake map. The earthquake drums here give us even a better indicator. Very minimal movement. couple small microquakes out there across North Island and um, South Island area. Looks awfully quiet down here. Not a whole lot going on here across these seismograph stations for now. All right, um, let's see. Let's check out the big island of Hawaii. It looks a little cluttered out here. We're still seeing some movement around the Kilauea Volcano and also Mauna Loa up here. A couple smaller earthquakes here around the northeastern flank of Mauna Loa. About a kilometer or so below the surface. Let's go ahead and double check the latest information statement here uh, on these volcanoes from the HVO. This update was put out today from, uh, from the folks there at the USGS. Kilauea Volcano is currently not erupting and... Uh, it's the same thing, and this could continue for a couple days, a couple weeks before we see things maybe just die off completely or remain elevated. But right now, nothing has changed. Uh, continue to wax and wane with changes to the input of magma into the area, and eruptive activity could occur in the near future with little or no warning. So earthquake activity, inflation, I'm sure, is still continuing. Let's double check the uh, inflation map today and see what's going on. The inflation chart, I should say. Uh, that's going to be these little red tilt meter type stations. Uh, here's the last two days. Steady decline in inflation. So this is deflation, meaning that subsidence is going on there across this area of the summit region. Now, taking quite the nosedive here after um, a few days of elevated activity. I have a feeling if this continues to go down and stays down for at least a week or more, then uh, we're going to be um, probably looking at a considerable pause in the uh, volcanic activity around the Kilauea volcano. Of course, we'll report back on that if anything changes. Uh, let's look at the rest of the map here. See what else is going on. Of course, Pahala area continuing to see some activity here on the southeastern region of the Big Island. Very typical down there, about 30 kilometers or so. The rest of the sea mounts out there look pretty quiet. Uh, into the Alaska region, a handful of earthquakes over here across this region of um, probably some volcanoes over there. Let's see what we got on the AVO site. Um, well, there's been a couple daily updates there uh, for those folks. I don't see anything that uh, has changed in terms of uh, volcanic activity up here. Of course, we're watching the Great Sitkin Volcano that's been showing a little bit of elevated activity here recently with some smoke plumes, ash cloud forecasts, it looks like. Uh, let's see what they got here for the daily update. Slow eruption of lava continues. That's why it's sitting at orange. I don't know if they're going to expect any uh, explosive eruption, but it uh, looks like the eruption of lava continues across this area of the Aleutian Trench. And that's kind of where we're seeing that earthquake activity take place today. Uh, up in the rest of Alaska here, mainly small microquakes across the area. Generally, this is typical across that zone. Uh, up here into the Montana and Idaho in Wyoming area. Got a little clustering of earthquakes here outside the Butte, Montana region. Nothing big. Looks like a 2.9. A little bit further south here around, uh, is that Lima or Lima? Lima, I think that's Lima. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
very close to Yellowstone, but I don't think we got anything major going on here at Yellowstone National Park. Just double check. As far as local seismicity goes, I don't see it um, at all. Not a whole lot going on. All right, uh, let's check out the rest of the West Coast here. Uh, overnight, anything above 2.5? Doesn't look like it. Goodness, quite quiet out here in the california region just very minimal activity getting a pretty good clustering going on here in nevada though um very small microquake activity but some movement nonetheless here around the looks like it may be off the rock valley fault zone here a couple different fault systems northwest of las vegas nothing big going on but uh, a little bit of seismic activity out there in the desert of nevada and uh, texas well not a whole lot going on here today some generally small microquakes out there around Pecos, Texas. Rest of the globe, I got one earthquake here in the South America region from yesterday. This area is seeing some deeper movement quakes and a little bit of newer activity up north here, it looks like, along that plate boundary with a very shallow 4.5 here recently around the Ecuador area, it looks like. Not showing up yet on the USGS map, but it is on the globe. And uh, there's a little 2.8 Java Trench. I still think we need to watch areas here. Keep an eye on this zone. Uh, we did see some deeper movement quakes here around the Izu Trench. That could spell uh, a little bit of uh, pressure building up here across the subduction zones itself along the eastern edge here of the Filipino Plate. Keep an eye on that. And, of course, we'll report back on any major changes that may be taking place. Right now, seismograph stations there look pretty quiet. One little earthquake there across the Hot Caves Hawaii station. That's very close to the Kilauea Volcano, just south there of the Summit region. Space weather activity right now looks like we got a little bit of flaring coming in from a far side active region. Look at that uh, beautiful feature showing up right here. That is uh, basically way over there. I'm going to save that for a, a thumbnail. I think that'll work out pretty cool. But it looks like we're getting a little bit of uh, sea flare activity coming in right now from that far side sunspot. And I don't know if we got a glimpse of it yet as far as the magnetic structure that it holds. It does look like it's way over there. We may just be seeing just barely a little edge of it right now. But it's still way over there across the eastern limb. We'll get a better look at that. In the coming days, uh, right now, though, we're left with in a couple of active regions down here that are uh, venturing further out of sight, out of mind here. They'll be gone probably tomorrow. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely uh, keep an eye on this area out on the eastern limb. Center disk and what's facing the Earth is just very minimal conditions, but still these flares that can pop off. Uh, even above the horizon of the um, the sun here, they can create uh, create these uh, these charged particles in the uh, in the upper levels. Looks like a little bit of a blackout going on here across the southern Pacific Ocean in terms of well, you could have issues with navigation systems, low frequency um, communication systems, and whatnot. Uh, and that's just from a sea flare, goodness, and that's way over there. So we'll keep an eye on the uh, potential here of some further active activity here in the Solar Weather Department in the coming days. Hopefully that remains active as it travels, rotates a little bit further into view. Right now, 90% chance of a sea flare, M flare at 15, X flare around 1% chance. Not a whole lot for aurora is currently taking place though. The uh, three-day three -day geomagnetic forecast here looks uh, looks pretty green. Not a whole lot of uh, elevated activity, at least according to this site here. Uh, let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Well, this is the El Nino. I did not mean to open that one. Look at those warmer ocean waters. Goodness, pretty crazy. Now, let's see here. Potentially, we do have... Let me put this into motion here. See if we can get this kicked up. I thought maybe there was some type of CME that did kick off. A really small, weak one. Uh, maybe yesterday. 
Doesn't look like it though. So um, not a whole lot of uptick. Maybe a little slight disturbance here around the Earth area uh, tomorrow, but it doesn't look like anything major set up. Hopefully we can get that to change, right? I would love to see uh, some very active conditions there on the sun. Makes for some interesting uh, newsworthy articles. And of course the aurora possibilities get elevated as well once we get some uh, large CMEs earth directed. So we'll keep our fingers crossed, see what happens in the coming days here. All right, uh, what else we got here? Storm Prediction Center. Looks like uh, we're getting a little bit of severe weather hints uh, around day four and day five. Now, let's look at day four. Day four is going to be uh, issued for the 20th. So next week, it looks like around the Monday, right? Monday, I believe is the date. Yep. Uh, severe weather potential, it looks like, around the Oklahoma and northern Texas area. Day 5, Tuesday, down in the south. Now, that's pretty decent there, um, this far out. So something must be uh, transpiring to make these folks put up a early warning. So we'll, we'll get a little bit better view of that as we look, uh, as we head towards the weekend. But today, not a, not a big deal in terms of uh, severe weather. Uh, numerical models out here once again do have a little bit of rain coming into the west coast not a big deal but it looks like well it looks like uh gonna get maybe a little bit more than what was originally forecasted which we'll take here and that's going to be a kind of a wet weekend here across the west coast uh some moisture picking up there's that potential of storming and severe weather come monday uh, and we'll have to check that out on a different model um, as we head into the weekend we'll get a little bit better perspective of it uh, but maybe potentially here as we head into the end of november first week of december storm door may be opening up here across the area of the west coast we'll definitely keep an eye on that fingers crossed we get some rainfall pretty dry out here right now all right folks i'm gonna bounce out of here have yourself a good day a little bit of activity there across mount st helens i don't know if that's earthquake activity or wind or snow you know, they do get some uh, some pretty uh, good wind up there across the Mount St. Helens area. There's that massive low pressure system off the shore. Um, let's see, is this working? Yeah, this is Mount St. Helens up there right now. Looks pretty clear, but uh, looks like the focus may be off. I'm not for sure who's in charge of this but uh, at least we got a little view of it it is from today it's a fixed cam and uh, it'd be nice if we seen a little bit clearer image of mount st helens here for sure all right i'm out of here uh i will do an update if uh hear anything else on the iceland activity but for now it looks like things are neutral uh, uh basically unchanged for the past couple days with no new developments for now we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on have a good one